Hi guys, it's me, Mr. Bertosh, your incredibly handsome, wonderful, great, and marvelous science teacher. And in this video, we're going to be talking about the Earth's oceans. There are some topics in science that I really enjoy talking about uh, and topics that got me to want to be interested in science and getting degrees in science and being a science teacher and all of that fun stuff. Uh, and one of those is the ocean. I would say dinosaurs, oceans, and astronomy are to me just really, really fascinating. And I have a lot of other videos where we go into a lot of detail that go along with my marine biology class uh, that, you know, I, I go through where I go through the oceans. In this video, I'm going to do a very over the surface uh, discussion on the oceans. And this video goes along with a middle school uh, oceans unit class that I do. So, with that in mind, let's talk about the oceans. And let's start with naming them. Uh, and I'm not going to actually name them because they were already named. They already have been given names, but let's talk about what the names are. So, there is one, what we refer to as a global ocean, and it is interconnected. You probably noticed that there aren't actually physical barriers between one ocean to the next. The water mixes back and forth between them. There's this ginormous current, uh, the thermohyaline circulation that goes all around the world from ocean to ocean, takes about a thousand years, but the water moves completely everywhere all around the earth. So it's really just one big ocean. And that one ginormous global ocean has some characteristics that are the same because it's one big ocean. The water's all mixed up. So, for example, it has the same salinity. Salinity refers to salt content. Well, how salty is the ocean, pray tell? Anyway, the ocean has uh, 35 parts per thousand of salt content. Well, what in the heck does that mean? That means that for every... Uh, unit of water, every gallon of water, whatever you want, whatever amount of water you take, you're going to have 3.5% of it by weight is going to be salt. So another way to say it is 3.5% of the ocean water is salt. That's a lot of salt. That's why it tastes so salty. Okay. Another important fact is that there is 71% uh, of the earth's surface is covered by the oceans, leaving only 29% to have uh, land. But you have to consider the difference between the ocean and the land to really get a sense for just how ginormous and massive the ocean is. Land is more uh, flat. I mean, I don't mean to say that it's entirely flat. There's mountains and hills and stuff. But everything that lives on land lives pretty close to the surface. There are things that live underground and there are things that, you know, live in trees and maybe even fly a little bit. Maybe even live, you know, some insects can spend a lot of time in the air. But it's a very narrow band for the most part of where most of the life is. It's really close to the surface, the vast majority of life. That's not the case in the ocean. The oceans are 71%, so you know a lot bigger, like twice as much ocean as land, but all that life isn't kept to this narrow band. It's spread across, in some cases, miles of depth. So I could have life at all those different levels. So that really gives you a sense for how much capacity 
the ocean has for living things. It's huge. There's a lot of space there. And in that space, there are a vast amount of numbers of living things. Uh, we've only explored, believe it or not, about 5% of the oceans, meaning that 95% of the oceans are unexplored. And there are undoubtedly living things that we don't even know that would be alien to us because we have not yet discovered them. Uh, living things, perhaps even some very large living things uh, that are new to science. So that's kind of cool to think about. Well, scientists do break the oceans down into smaller units and uh, or smaller oceans. And there are five officially oceans around the world. And this is actually kind of recent because the Southern Ocean was added in my lifetime. But uh, there are five main oceans. If I went back to my elementary school teachers, they would tell me that was the wrong answer because it didn't used to be that way. But now there are five oceans and they are the Pacific Ocean, the Atlantic Ocean, the Indian Ocean, the Arctic Ocean, and depending on who you talk to, the final ocean is either going to be called the Southern Ocean or the Antarctic Ocean. It's more common now to call it the Southern Ocean, but a lot of people still call it the Antarctic Ocean. So it just kind of depends who you talk to. A couple facts about each ocean. So the Pacific Ocean is by far the largest. It is between North America, South America on one side, and Asia uh, and Australia on the other side and it wraps around the earth. It has over 25,000 uh, islands. That's what I'm trying to say, if you can believe that, which is a lot of islands. That's a mind-numbing number of islands. 25,000 islands. I've been on a handful of them, but not many. Um, and what else? It is the largest ocean by size. It is also the deepest ocean. Uh, by uh, average depth, and also it happens to have the deepest uh, area, the Mariana Trench. So, yeah. Uh, Atlantic Ocean is between the north, the east side of North and South America and Europe and Africa. It's a much smaller ocean than the Pacific Ocean. And in the middle of it, it has this mid-Atlantic uh, rift or ridge depending on your preference, most people say ridge. And it is that which is where the continents, North and South America and Europe and Africa are actually moving apart from each other. So over time, the Atlantic Ocean is getting bigger, just a little bit bigger, like an inch or so every, every year. It's getting bigger very slowly, and the Pacific Ocean is gradually, very slowly getting smaller as the continents move apart from each other in one in the Atlantic Ocean and towards each other in the Pacific Ocean. Okay. Um, the Indian Ocean is uh, the bottom underneath Asia uh, on the top on towards the north. And it has uh, Africa on the uh, west side and uh, Australia and uh, Indonesia on the east side. And then the Arctic Ocean is at the top in the north around the North Pole. It is the smallest ocean, incidentally, by size, and also the shallowest. And then the Southern Ocean in the bottom, the newest ocean, not really the newest, uh, but the newest that we've recognized. I mean, it's been there the whole time. It didn't just suddenly start to exist, but uh, scientists decided it was an ocean. So the Southern Ocean. <laughs> Uh, so those are the oceans. Now, let's talk for a minute about ocean currents. And I have an entire video on ocean currents, which goes into a lot more detail. But uh, still, let's briefly talk about ocean currents. Ocean currents are like ginormous rivers where the water is flowing through the ocean. And they're all over the ocean, and they play a significant role in moving nutrients around the water. And uh, they play a role in climate uh, because they bring they move warm water and cold water up and down 
the coasts of continents, depending on which side you're on of the continent. So these rivers, these currents, are uh, an important part of how things move around the ocean. One of the most significant currents, if you live in North and South America, and there are many other important currents. I'm just picking one as an example. Okay, for those of us in North and South America, uh, one that plays an important role is the uh, Gulf Stream Current, which starts down in the Gulf of Mexico, goes down and around Florida, and down in the Gulf of Mexico, it's warm because that's uh, down in the tropical uh, region. And it, so that water down there is getting warmed up by the sun, and it comes around the bottom of Florida, and then it goes up along the eastern coast of the United States. And that brings warm water up the eastern coast of the United States, and it warms the states along the coast a little bit more than they otherwise would be. So states like Georgia and South Carolina and North Carolina are warmer than and the waters are warmer than states at the same latitude on the west coast of the United States, uh, like California, where it's just a, that at the same latitude, it's just a little bit colder. So those because of the currents, the uh, water and air are warmed up. Hooray. Another important thing to understand about the oceans are upwellings. And I do an entire video on upwellings. So this is just a very brief overview. There's a lot more to know and to understand. But upwellings uh, are a place where life is very active. Upwellings occur along the coasts of continents and to a much smaller extent uh, along the uh, coasts of islands. Okay, The water is pushed up along the coast from the depths of the ocean. And as it comes up, it brings nutrients from the soil, the ground, the dirt comes up into the water, mixes in the water. You need soil, you need dirt in order for phytoplankton to be able to grow. And phytoplankton feeds the rest of the ecosystem in the ocean. So those upwellings provide a huge source of soil that comes up from the bottom of the ocean along the coast and in, the, in these currents is pushed up into the water column, mixes up in the top in the photic zone with the light, and uh, that allows phytoplankton to bloom the phytoplankton is then eaten by uh, you know zooplankton and or by little tiny fish and things and then they are eaten by bigger fish and bigger fish and it creates this whole entire ecosystem as a result of that 25% of all living things in the ocean live where upwellings occur live along the coasts of continents okay that's these upwellings only cover 5% of the ocean, and yet 25% of all life uh, in the oceans is in these areas where upwellings occur. And again, very brief overview. Uh, to learn you know, more in depth on what upwellings are and why they happen and all the facts about upwellings, you can watch my upwelling video. And the last important fact about the ocean that I want to briefly uh, talk about is something that you that seems a little bit counterintuitive, maybe. On land, you have a lot more life, or at least it seems like you have a lot more life in tropical places because you have rainforests and things, and wherever it's warm, you seem to have a lot more, unless it's a desert, you have a lot more life. And in the poles, you don't have very much life at all. It's really cold, and land animals don't seem to do so well. Just a few things like polar bears and things, and not too many other things live there. Penguins and two different sides of the, uh, the earth, but anyway. Uh, but the opposite is the case in the ocean. 
In the oceans, I have a lot more life in the poles and a lot less life in warm water. So cold water produces a lot of life in the oceans and very little life in the tropical warm waters, unless it's where upwellings occur, like along the coast of islands and things. Well, why? Why is that? Why is there so much life in cold water and so little life in warm water? Warm water in the ocean is like a desert, and cold water is just thriving. To understand this, there's two things you need to uh, think about. So first of all, and these are two things that living things need in order to thrive. Uh, plants, in particular, producers. They need sunlight and they need soil, as we talked about a minute ago. They need dirt okay, to build their bodies out of. They need the molecules they get from the soil to construct themselves. So I got to have those two things if I'm going to have a lot of life. Well, in tropical water, there's a lot of sunlight, okay? And in polar waters, there is less sunlight, but there's still sunlight. But what I'm missing in tropical waters is the soil. And in the polar waters, I have a lot of soil. And the reason is not to do with the depth of the ocean, but to do with something called a thermocline. So water, any substance, when it is heated, it floats. And when it is cold, it sinks. In tropical waters, where the water is a lot warmer, the top layer of the ocean is heated, and it becomes very warm, and so it becomes less dense, and so it floats, and the water below it is cold and more dense, and it sinks. And so the top layer, the warm water, stays on top, and the cold water stays below, and they never, they don't mix. They become two separate layers of water, and there's no mixing between them. And as a result, and by the way, this is called a thermocline, as a result of this thermocline, the soil that comes from the bottom of the ocean can't break through. And so it's stuck down in the dark, cold water below. And the sunlight at the top is, uh, you know, is there and it's warming the water, but it's got no soil. And so I can't get anything that grows there because living things can't build their bodies, the producers, because they don't have access to the soil. And if they go down to where there's soil, they don't have access to sunlight. But in the polar regions, where the entire water column is cold, the entire water column is the same temperature, that allows the soil from the bottom of the ocean to mix and to come up to the top waters and enrich the waters with nutrients up where the sunlight is. And so I, up at the top, I have both nutrients and sunlight. And so in polar waters, I don't have a thermocline. I have no warm layer of water that's blocking the soil from coming out. And because of that, I get a lot, a lot, a lot of life. It's just filled with living things. That's why fish uh, people, fisher humans, go to the polar regions to catch fish because that's where all the fish are. Uh, other than in the along barrier reefs and those are just those are fish you wouldn't eat anyway hi guys thanks for watching my video these rambling science videos where i go unscripted and just kind of barf up all the science knowledge out of my head are part of a series that go along with an online class that i teach which you can sign up for if you go to handsomescienceteacher.com. I also have a whole bunch of free resources for homeschoolers. I have uh, hundreds of articles on every topic that uh, covers your entire science curriculum from fifth through eighth grade. I have online games and quizzes, all curated and written by uh, this handsome guy, uh, a science teacher with well, three, three degrees, but two of them are in science. So it's uh, targeted right to and directly to your, uh, your science student. So sign up.
subscribe to the channel and I release lots of videos also in addition to these ones lots of little uh, short videos that are like two minutes long that cover science topics those ones you don't get to see my handsome face but they're still good videos and they're much more targeted and those ones are scripted so you don't have to hear me like you are right now going blah 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 the end uh, subscribe thank you goodbye